You hear these snaps? You're strong enough, you don't need to take off the breaching, right? You can lift up the saddle breaching and all. All right, take these snaps off. Oh, just hook it right to that. Go directly into here. I put the snaps on. I got a, a lot of folks my age that can't lift this stuff anymore, and they put the breaching on and stuff as they go. But she's young enough, she needs to get tougher anyway. Get your muscles up. Throw that saddle up there. Exercise that saddle. You need to trade it in for that lighter one, I think. <laughs> oh, I, I guarantee you, you start riding that lighter saddle, it's, it's a wonderful thing. Okay, so this is my hip safe. I want my hip safe between the, the point of the croup and the dock of the tail, kind of in the middle, all right? Now, I want it that way because where my hip safe is, is going to dictate how my breeching is hanging correctly. And it's also going to be able to make sure my quarter straps are correct. So, once I've done that, then I'm going to take this strap. And it's going to go right up into here. All right, now. What is the reason for me to go there? My saddle is going to move right and left. So when my saddle starts to move this way, this quarter strap holds that saddle to keep it from going that way. When it starts to come over here, the strap on the other side is going to hold it. Y'all see that? So the purpose of quarter straps is to keep the front of the saddle from moving a lot. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. All right. So we'll go ahead and take it up on this one. Leave that loose. You now, got does that? it matter if, does this always have to be on the outside? Makes no difference. Okay. It can be on the back side. It can be on the top side. Okay. But it's still going to move, even if it's underneath here. Because when you cinch up on the other side, a lot of times, well, I always have it underneath. But it'll still move. Okay. The, the idea of the breaching, folks, is not to hold the saddle back. Okay? It's only to bump it. That's it. Not to continue to hold it all the time. So this is what happens. The breaching is against the rump of the mule. When I start to go forward, the breaching comes away from the, the, the hip. Then as it goes back, it touches it. So it actually what it's doing, it's saying right side stay here, left side stay here, right side, left side. Got that idea? It's not to stay against the animal all the time. I want an inch and a half of movement. So as I get that part done, I got this part done. I'll go over here to the other side. Yep. This is this is beta. Has a nylon core in it. It's 650 psi per square inch compared to leather at 250. It doesn't mildew. It's indestructible. And this way, I haven't been able to tear it up yet. Now. There we go. I'll get you straightened up a bit. Now, I take my hand and I slide it down here. That's a half an inch. And then I pull it away. I should see only an inch. I'm obviously seeing two inches. So I'm going to pull up here one notch. I'm going to go to the other side. Pull up here one notch. Now notice my mule is standing fairly straight in the back end. All right, so I slide my hand in here. That's a half an inch, and I pull it away, and now I can see another inch. Y'all see that? General me measurements for you to get started. Slide your hand in here a half an inch. Pull back away, I should see an inch. Inch and a half is your beginning measurement. Remember now, your saddle can always move an inch and a half forward and back, left and right. If this saddle goes two inches, guess what it's gonna be? on top of the scapula. All right, now, this mule right now is walking on flat ground, he's this long. When I'm coming off the side of that mountain, he's gonna shorten up 10 inches. So what do I gotta do with my breaching? It on, right? Shorten it up, right here. Shorten it up, take it up to the next notch. And as you get used to it, maybe even two notches, depending on how steep it is. People think, okay, I got the breaching on, 
it is going to keep my saddle in place, yes, but it's imperative you adjust the breeching according to your terrain. According to your terrain, okay? Now, this is your hip plate here. This is about as low as I want to go. That now, as the mule is going down the hill, he's going to sit on that breeching and he's going to hold that saddle back. Now I'm working a little rolly heels. I'm going to lift, I'm going to have to add another notch here, but I'm going to, I'm going to uh, add another notch and I'm going to bring my breeching up to here. From here, from this point to here, you've got roughly about 10 to 12 inches. So adjust it up to here if you're running flatter ground, lower, when you're coming off a steep mountain, get off and, 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 and uh, uh, lower it down. Now, when I take breaks, my mule's gonna take a break. And most of the time, my mule's gonna take more breaks than me. All right, that's really important. So, I'm getting ready to take a break. I'm getting ready to climb off the side of this hill, and it's a steep son of a gun. So I wanna get my mule comfortable. I want to be comfortable. Pull my breaching back a little bit. I'm sorry, sweetheart. All right, pull this up. Take that cinch completely loose. I lift up the back of my saddle and I shake it up and down. And I let cool air go in there. All right, makes a major difference in them. So I open it up here, put it down, open it up, put it down. It's all nice and cool. Then I go ahead, just that little bit's a major difference. I go ahead and I set my breaching. Now I adjust my breaching down. I retighten everything here and go off the side of that mountain. Quite often, if I'm out working these mountains and stuff, I'll probably change my breaching at least twice during the day. I don't have the rub spots. I got a comfortable meal and I don't have a bunch of white hairs all over the place because I took care of my mule. <laughs>